Welcome to Deceptology here at State Library Victoria. My name is Nicholas J. Johnson. Before we begin, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we stand and their elders, past and present. Today, we have some extraordinary magic for you that I have dug up out of the W.G. Alma Conjuring Collection. It's a huge collection of magic books that are right here at State Library. And you don't even need to come into the library to access them. They're all available on the State Library website. Well, all the good ones anyway. So today, we're gonna play a little game. Because after all, we're in the dome at the State Library and you'll often see people here reading books and researching, but also just playing games with each other and chilling out. So this is my game for you today. I have here three matchboxes. Now this matchbox here is our winning one and I've given you a, a little prize there. It's packed full of spare change. We know this is the winning one because we can hear it. These ones, however, are empty and so they don't make a sound at all. I'm gonna mix them up and see if you can follow which one has the cash. Here we go. It's like that, like that, like that and like that. Now, if you said that this one was the winning matchbox, you would be, we'd be incorrect. If you said this one was the winning matchbox, you would also be incorrect. This one over here, that's where the cash is. I'll give you another chance, follow it closely. Here we go, mix them up, mix them up, mix them up, mix them up, okay. So, if you said that uh, this one over here was the winner, now I'm afraid you're wrong, oh! You would have been right. I'm so good I fooled myself. Wow. There we go. But you probably would have thought that it was over here or over here. Let's try it one more time. So uh, let's see. I think uh, you got fooled the first time. I got fooled the second time. All right. So where is it? I think, yes, there it is. Okay. Watch it close. I'll do it nice and slow. Just like that. Here we go. Now, if you said it's here, you're wrong. If you said it's here, you're wrong. If you said it's here, you're right. But here's the thing, if I just click my fingers, you can see that the coins have actually disappeared from there, and they're not over there, and they now are, that's right, all the way over there. You can never, ever win. Now, this is a very tricky game that you can play with your friends. You're gonna need three matchboxes, emptied of all matches. You're gonna need some coins, like this. Now, what I've done with these coins, this is a, a bit tricky, is I've taken these coins and I've actually glued them into the tray, like that. So you can see when I shake it like that, they don't fall out. So where then does the rattling sound come from? Because if you listen, nothing, nothing, nothing. Well, the rattling sound is actually coming from, wait for it, the fourth matchbox. Have a look at this. Up my sleeve, there is an extra matchbox. This is the one that actually contains the coins. So when I shake my wrist like this, that's what's making the sound. So it's just a simple matter of mixing up the matchboxes, whichever one they choose. You pick up with this right hand and shake. Sorry, you lose. And say it's actually over here. And it's literally that simple. But here is the question. Why is it that we can't tell that the sound is coming from here. Why is it that our brain tells us that it's coming from the other matchbox? Well, that's because your hearing isn't actually that good at figuring out where sounds are coming from. So we use our other senses to give us information. And this is called cross-modal perception. That is when rather than just having our senses speaking directly to our brains, it's our, our senses communicating with each other. So here, you think that this matchbox has the coins in it, one, because you can hear it, but two, because you can see it. So your sight and your hearing are both working together. In fact, there's another example of cross-modal perception going on right now, me. You can hear my voice, right? And if I asked you, where is my voice coming from? You would say, well, clearly it's coming from your mouth. But it's not, because you're watching this on a video. And that means that the sound is actually coming from a speaker. Maybe there's a little speaker on the bottom of your laptop screen, or maybe you're watching it on a television, 
and they're actually coming from Bluetooth speakers that are several meters away. Or maybe you're watching it on a phone and you're actually listening through headphones. The sound of my voice is nowhere near my mouth. And yet, because of cross-modal perception, your brain puts that sound in my mouth. What would happen if I was to, uh, to stop talking? So instead of doing this, I started to do this. Now, I'm not very good at this and my voice starts to sound a bit muffled, but you could still kind of tell that I'm talking. So what if I stop looking at you and I look over here like this and introduce a puppet. <laughs> it's a puppet. So you'll see that it looks like I'm talking to a puppet. Uh, hello, how are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. How are you today? Now I am not a very good ventriloquist at all, but you get the basic idea. Oh yeah, good idea. The sound of my voice appears to be coming from the puppet because my lips are barely moving and the sound uh, and the puppet's mouth is. It's cross-modal perception. And what is cool about this is it isn't just sight and sound. It works with all of our senses. For example, watch this. I'm gonna pick up an imaginary chip. This chip isn't here and I'm gonna eat it. Listen to how it sounds. Now I'm gonna pick up another imaginary chip and listen to how it sounds. Which chip do you think was more delicious? If you said the first one, that's because you heard that the crunch was louder. The crunchier chips sound, the more delicious we think they're going to be and so the better they taste. That's why chip companies always have crunching sounds in their ads. Not because they want to show you that the chips taste good, but because they want to make you think that the chips sound good. Anyway, all of this talk of chips is making me hungry, so I'm going to get my change here and uh, maybe go and grab myself some chips. Empty? Oh, come on!